Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. Today we are here, a rather windy and slightly wet, I have to say, port of pool, to have a look at this lovely Beneteau Swift Trawler 35. As you can see, she's finished in this beautiful pearl grey hull colour with white superstructure. We'll just have a quick rip around the outside whilst it's not raining. This is an incredibly well-kept boat. It's a beautiful hull colour. Lovely sideboarding gate. A lot of presence this boat and a lot of really nice comfortable interior space and volume. So there you go. We will board via the stern door. Just because we're going to get some shelter. So starting with bathing platform. Lovely. I'm guessing that's teak, but I could be wrong. Platform, you've got a couple of cleats on either side, and then two 32 amp shore power inlets there, and this really clever double door system. So I'll just hop on board, open the gate. So you can open that gate, you can do exactly the same. We just clip this one back. You can then I don't know well you can see this but down here is a second bolt so that enables this door to swing out over here like so and holding it for the wind and bolt into there and if you did that on both sides as you can imagine that gives you a really good open space. I'll just quickly do it with this one more where you can give you full effect. So that goes out like that to there. Catch goes in like that. And if I stand over here you can see you've effectively got full access to the water over the back of the bathing platform. I'm going to clip those back in the wind catches them it's a very very clever use of space so that slides back into there that as you can imagine then drops back into this little catch there do the same with this one lift it back up slide it back into place dropping it back down and for the sake of it we'll close this one off as well while we're aboard you also notice Cleverly built in the back of here are two folding seats, so they both fold down so you have a seat on both sides. And the other really clever thing is this ladder here, which we'll have a look at later because it's going to take us up to the flybridge. You can unpeg it here, like so, and that lifts and drops back there. So you effectively you can have the ladder running vertically there freeing up this entire cockpit space, which if I step back here for a sec, you can see that, that is actually quite a decent sized bit of cockpit. The other thing which is quite clever is if we go around this side deck here, you'll notice there's a little wind gate. So this is the main side for getting around the side of the boat. So you can lift that up, drop it back, this little magnetic catch in there to hold it in and you get the continuation of the teak down the side deck, really high bulwarks. Again, you can see why it's so light inside, which you'll notice when we go inside, because the whole thing is glass. Here is the side gates that we saw before, so pretty straightforward. You can unhook that, okay, just turn around here, and then really easily step onto the pontoon, no effort at all. You also notice if you're stepping onto the pontoon here, you've got this very, very large captain's side access door, which makes it really easy for single-handed maneuvering to jump on and off the boat. You just click this door back in, so it is a bit on the windy side here today. So yeah, very easy single-handed maneuvering. We'll talk about it when we get on board, but she's got a bow and a stern thruster. You've got access down there for Diesel, I would imagine that is, on possibly waste. 
but asymmetric side deck. So that is your main side deck. So if I just quickly turn around, you can see how beautifully sheltered that is. It's got the overhang from the flybridge up there. And if you go to the other side deck, you'll notice it's a lot smaller. Lovely stainless steel anchor. Really, really decent size and decent length of anchor. Mated to an electric anchor winch and a lovely Lumar stainless steel anchor there. I'm guessing this is probably similar access. Yeah, there you go. Access to the same locker. There's a great set of cushions to go on the fore deck here to keep it nice, or not keep it, but, but to lounge out when the weather is somewhat better than it is today. And you notice if you go down this side here, that there is a raised side deck. So it's not a sunken side deck, but it does give you the ability to go up and down both sides. But as you can imagine, it's not quite as nice as moving forward on this side deck because you can move up to the helm door, in and out the helm door, off the side of the boat, very, very straightforward. And I'm just going to shut this to get the weather out. So that's pretty much the outside. A couple of other bits and pieces you'd expect. The shower down there, some more cleats on the top here, somewhere for life rafts or throwing ring. That, believe it or not, is an emergency tiller for your steering. And then you've got things like Bilge pump access over there. And down here, let's have a quick look. Because this is a mid-engine boat, what we have is a very, very large lazarette. So if this was a stern drive or an out drive boat, what we would have here would be the engines. But if actually what we have is a lazarette, so straight away you can see the Owen generator down there. A few other bits and pieces, but quite a lot of storage going right the way over. I drop the camera down over into the far side there. And again, lots of storage tucked up under that side over there, look. So that's the lazarette. I'll just drop it down and then we can go inside and get out of this pretty hideous weather. So that's one and that's two. So again, this whole door section here, this door slides into that door, which slides into that door, so you can have the doors open from there right the way across to here. Little catch, this is quite neat, little safety catch you push down here, and then you just slide the door open. I am quite logically going to take my shoes off before we go inside. And as you can see now, this second door then slides right the way across. I am not going to do that today because the weather is pretty grotty. Just slide that back shut. So I'm going to take a turn around here first, just to show you the saloon area and how beautiful it is. So this is the later generation, this is the 35, not the 34, so it's a much nicer finish inside. This converts into a full-size sofa bed, so that folds out over there, gives you a full-size sofa bed, and it's a much nicer sofa bed. Some of the earlier editions of this boat, I understand, came with an IKEA inserted sofa bed. This is very much the one that came from the factory. And you'll see the wood is absolutely beautiful. It's an Al Alpi wood. I think I call it Alpi Teak, but again, I could be wrong. And also what's lovely is the floor is silver oak. So it's covered in these over carpets, but underneath is the oak flooring, silver oak flooring. High low table there. It looks like it folds out as well. Beautiful sideboard cabinetry over here with absolutely acres of storage. This entire sideboard is just storage. And as you would imagine, I don't need to open every cupboard, but it's exactly the same on the other cupboard over there. I mentioned this is a really high spec boat. So obviously you've got the fusion stereo system here, water tankage and waste tankage and battery voltage, I believe on that gauge. And this boat comes with three reverse cycle air conditioning units as you can see here the flat screen tv on the wall and hiding behind this other lovely piece of fishy artwork is your trips control panel for the own and own generator also comes with a master volt battery inverter system so you can get 240 mains voltage out of your 12 volt battery bank 
But again, if we look at this side here, you can see all the lovely windows. Proper little ship vertical, near vertical screens. And then this panel here, across here, is all of that glass panel we looked at from the outside. You can see the second AC unit down there. And there's additional storage under here. On the port side, we have the galley. Quite a decent run of worktop. Double burner gas hob. Then there's a gas cooker down here. A little cutlery drawer under here, which is really neat. A bit more storage under the sink. The crockery. And there's another storage bin down there. Lovely stainless steel double sink. Mixer tap. Aircon ventilation. More storage. And under here is like a little glory hole to hide just about everything sort of navigational and also what they've done which is quite clever is there's a cupboard down here pretty straightforward with a bin in it which is really handy but you'll notice they put a little cushion on the top of it so that's somewhere to perch when the boat's going along so that's the galley port side starboard side we have the helm oh and actually to be honest under the helm before I forget down here is your number one fridge. Decent helm seat, easily seat two people. Seat three if they were really cozy. The normal bolster that we see that drops down, and I believe that seat also is on runners, but there you go. So you can slide the main helm seat backwards and forwards as you wish, and you can stand, or you'll notice there there's a footrest that also I believe then folds down so you can actually stand at a raised position. Got a better vision here of that massive door. Runs all the way down here. That slides right the way back, so it's very easy to go from helming through the door, out through the side door gate that we looked at onto the pontoon. So, very much a little ship's feel. Very, very large wheel. All the usual rain rain bits and pieces. So this one comes with cruise, cruise control, or autopilot, sorry, I should say. The usual array of carling switches comes with a Cummins QSB 6.7 litre single shaft driven engine, a rain marine hybrid touch, throttle and gear selector, trim tabs, twin thrusters, so one for the bow, one for the stern, and that also comes with remote controls, which is really, really neat. But what a beautiful place to stand. This is very much like being on a proper boat. And the other lovely thing about the vertical windscreens is it brings everything further forward. It means that the wipers work really well because they're on individual screens. So it's, it's a really good sea boat, this one. Because it's single engine, it tends not to drift around quite as much. Now normally, again, because the engines are under the floor, under here, there's no underneath cabin. So all the accommodation is forward of the helm. But again, it's still surprisingly spacious. So let's go and have a quick look. So a few steps takes you down into the lobby. We'll go to the port side double cabin first. So pretty standard double cabin. Quite nice because there's two portholes there for ventilation and illumination. Really decent size cupboard up here. And then there's a little bit of storage down there. And then behind the door here, down there, is another cupboard and a mirror. And then you can see air conditioning vent over there. But pretty standard. The other nice thing is that proper memory foam mattresses. And there's one of the infills, I guess, for one of the cushions somewhere. And if I go in here and turn around, over here on the starboard side, we have the number one heads. Again, wet self-draining floor, which is really nice. Decent size for a boat, to be honest with you. Decent size porcelain sink. Two opening port lights, which is really neat. And plenty of storage. Really, really deep cupboard in there. There's another two cupboards under the sink here. Like so. And then they've really cleverly done the uh, heads. I'm just going to pop the loose seat down. Excuse me. 
So if you want to, you can fold that wooden bench down over the top of the heads, and then you've got a fully enclosed shower here with a perspex door and a fairly conventional shower. So you can have a shower, so you have to wipe all the loo out, and obviously means that it, it does keep the rest of the heads dry because that drains out of the floor down there. And I don't know whether you can see it, but down here is a fairly substantial lip to keep the water in. And again, there's more storage in over there and a really neat little towel holder and a mirror up there. So that's the heads. These are quite funny as well. They've got these non-catch door catches. So these catches are magnetic. And yet when you touch them, they pop back out again. Really lovely. So again, utilizing and maximizing as much space as possible, the door to the master cabin, forward cabin, is split. So there's like a 60-40, 60-40 door. So let's go and have a look in here. So this opens as you would expect. One door goes that way. And once that's open, the other door just pushes to the side. But the other thing about it is, it does allow you to have more floor space. Because if that was a full-size door, I'm not sure it would clear the end of the bed. So you've got a nice bit of floor space there. Lovely, really decent sized double bed. Again, with a really nice memory mattress. Massive illumination through the hull windows with the opening port lights. And that's the same on both sides. So imagine if you went on the pontoon, you'd be looking out over the seizure line bed, another opening port light. Pretty standard escape hatch, ventilation hatch with the usual blinds that cover it across. So that one's a fly screen. The other side will be a blackout blind. Head of the bed, you've got uh, 240 mains voltage sockets on both sides with USBs and reading lights. And two really good size lockers. Really massive lockers, in fact. And another one on this side, like so. And in case you're wondering, yes, there are blinds. You can't see them, they're hidden behind the wooden helmet, but the blinds come down so you can completely close this cabin in darkness at night. As if those two massive wardrobes weren't enough storage, lift up the head of the bed, or the end of the bed, I suppose, technically, and then there is an absolutely vast storage locker in there. And that little pinhole down there is to gain access to your, I don't know, it's probably quite dark in there, but your air conditioning Dometic chiller units. I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is a very, very well spec boat. And as we leave the accommodation deck, you'll notice under the steps there is all the mast switches and breakers for the batteries and the trips for the batteries, sorry. So let's go and have a quick look on the fly bridge. Before I do that, because it is very, very windy, I'm just going to open the hatch and check everything's secure before we go up there. I'll catch up with you in a moment. So here we go. I have opened quite large hatch gives us really good access it's on a self support as well so even in this weather it's going to hold itself up nicely they are surprisingly large wide steps and there's grab handles both sides there's a grab handle when you come up here as well and this is one massive deck space I'm going to put myself up in the corner here like so just to give you an idea of just how wide and how much space there is up here it is a pretty grotty day stainless radar arch and there also looks to be a bimini that runs across here and up there you can see there's a uh, radar gps and vhf aerials i'm not going to take any of the covers off because it's pretty horrible up here and i'll drop in some pictures so you can see what this looks like you'll see big run of seating around there individual helm station and uh, i'll drop some pictures in as well repeaters and everything from that we saw downstairs automatically repeats up here really really good visibility forwards great visibility up here of the side deck as well and as i said before bow and stern thrusters and look at the entertaining party space you've got at the back here dodges all the way around so if it is a bit of a breezy day you've got a bit of protection there so yeah so there you go that is a beneto swift trawler 35 thanks to uh, origin yachts for letting us have a look and I'll leave you with a rather wet and windy port of port. Thanks for watching, see you next time round.